And welcome back to the Profile Pod. I'm your host, Double A, back for another spectacular episode of the pod. I'm here with, uh, as you can see, in the friendly confines of the studio, standing by with our amazing guest, Chantel. And before we get into everything, I just want to remind everybody to subscribe to the podcast on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that little red button and subscribe, uh, support, and follow. That's one way to, to, to really show some support um, is by subscribing on, on YouTube. And don't forget to follow, follow me on Instagram and leave a rate and review on Apple Podcast. I really appreciate everybody's input. That's super important to me. So, uh, yeah, tell me how much you love the podcast. Tell me, tell me anything. I'm, I'm, I'm open for any type of criticism or love, mainly love, but it's okay. You know, so um, big shout out to Sue Ellish. Los Angeles Magazine for naming the Profile Pod number four in their top 25 podcast in Los Angeles. Um, so big shout out to them. What an honor. Very humbling. So, you know, it's, it's, it's always a pleasure. It's always amazing and uh, such a great feeling to, to be recognized for, for your efforts, for your work. So big shout out to Sue Elish. Thank you so much for that. And congratulations to all the other podcasters in the top 25. There's so many podcasts out there here, especially here in the Los Angeles area. So uh, thank you very much. So let's get to brass tacks. We have our, our guest here standing by. She is a woman of many, many. Uh, she's a master of many trades. You know, people like to say the jack of all trades, but no, no, she's she's that. And she masters everything that she does. She's an entrepreneur. She's a fitness enthusiast. She is, has modeled, um, she's done, uh, she's been on House Hunters, she was a guest on that show, among many other things that we're going to get into. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my fellow Simi Valley neighbor, Chantel Phillips. Hello, hello, thank you for having me today. I'm really excited to be here. Oh no, of course, of course, Chantel. No, thank you so much for taking the time, I appreciate that. Um, I, you know, I, I was telling you earlier, uh, I was apologizing because we were supposed to do this months ago. <laughs> um you know but thanks to the leak in my my roof and all that but uh no thank you so much how are you how have you been good good you know it's, i think from the time we were supposed to do this till now there's even more that has happened even more to bring to the table so there's a lot that's a lot that's been going on but so far so good everything is great i'm i'm in good spirits yeah no i see i see your content you're you're you're, you're creating a lot of content you're in the gym you're you're hustling you're doing your thing um very inspirational stuff Chantel, and like I always say, this podcast is, is I'm bottom line, okay, is you have to be doing inspiration, you have to be, I bring on individuals doing extraordinary things in life to inspire us all. Mm -hmm. And you are the epitome of that. Um, so, you know, so yeah, thank you so much for, for, for being who you of are. Of course, of course. Inspiration is what I live by. If it could be my middle name, it would be. Um, I find that there's like a big difference between inspiration and impact. And there's people that inspire, and then there's people that inspire to impact. And I am one that wants to inspire to impact. I don't just want to be an influence. I want to be an inspiration. And it goes from influence to inspiration to impact. And so that's kind of the trifecta. I love that. I love that. Yeah, no, that's, the, like I said, you you uh, embody everything that we, we, we for the, to the essence of this podcast. So, uh, you know, I don't even want to already be, I begin. I mean, you, you're doing so much. Uh, wh where, where do you think that comes from, though, Chantel, for yourself, um, that drive, that ambition? You know, have you always been like that? When, you know, were you that type of kid in high school, for example? Were you like the, the well-rounded, you know, student council, you know, athlete, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, I feel like you, you looked at my resume already. But uh, <laughs> no, yeah, you know, I will say this. This all stems from my father. I will say it comes from my dad. My dad has taught me to always work smart, not hard. He's always taught me to chase my passions, chase my dreams, because then I will find purpose from there. Instead of chasing like the end result, chase what you love, and then that's what that's what will fulfill you in life. And I feel like I call myself a multi-passionate entrepreneur because I chase passions. I don't chase money. Yes, money comes from it. That's why I'm successful, but I chase passions. And so growing up, funny you ask, because... I, the same person I am today, I was at like five years old. I was at like 10. I was at 15. Um, ask my neighbors, go back to my childhood neighborhood, um, knock on any door, and they will know my name because I was definitely the girl that had 
five businesses when I was eight years old, 10 years old. And mm. the businesses consisted of, um, you know, selling oranges to my neighbors. I would go and have a bag of oranges <laughs> for my aunt and uncle and I would sell oranges. I had a graphic design business where I would um, get on the computer and I'd write Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. And I'd go around during the holidays to all my neighbors and I would ask them, hey, I'm starting a business. I'm 10 years old and I have graphic design cards. Do you want to buy one? And so just led from there, even rocks. I would put inspirational quotes on rocks and I would sell them to the neighbors. So I always had this entrepreneurial mindset. And I think because I did that growing up, it was just instilled in me that that's normal. And so mm. I created this sense of normalcy that hustle for the muscle is what you do. And so that's kind of how I've lived my life up until this point. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's, I love that. I love that. So, grow, I mean, uh, I, I, I would say, I would venture to say that you, you knew at an early age that you weren't probably going to go into the 95, nine to five route or, you know, um, I mean, no, not necessarily because I did see my mom and dad both take that nine to five route. So I was very open to that. Um, I just knew that I wanted to always do what I loved. They always said, if you are going to do a nine to five, make sure it's what you love. Cause you do spend nine hours there. You know, you're, you're there, you should enjoy your coworkers. You, you should enjoy the job that you're actually doing. And so I do have a nine to five now, but I also have extra side hustles all oh. across me. So I'm busy. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. I, I did not know that. Um, yeah. 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 You know, myself, when I, when I look back at my life, you know, when I was coming up, you know, in the high school years and, um, I didn't really have, I didn't have a plan. You know, mm -hmm. I, I didn't have a vision. I didn't really know what I wanted to do in life. What advice would you give to someone, you know, that's kind of in that same predicament? They're not, they, they, they need some guidance. Yeah. You know, they, they kind of need uh, to figure out, or not to figure out, but, you know, how would you maybe lead someone in that direction to where they can kind of discover and start maybe planning and realizing what they want to do? you know, post high school and, you know, in their early twenties yeah, yeah. as they get their life started. Yeah, absolutely. So my advice would be, it's okay to not have a plan. I think we put so much pressure on ourselves to have a plan and so much pressure that we have to be a certain way. And <laughs> so true. society tells us that we're supposed to be a certain way. And I think accepting who you are for who you are is okay. Like if you don't have a plan, it's okay. You don't have to have a plan. I don't even think I had a plan. Like where, what I studied is not where I am now. So it's ironic. My, if I had a plan, it wouldn't be where I am today. So me just following my passions led me to the purpose of what I'm supposed to do. So my advice would be, be okay with not having a plan if you don't have one. If you have one, great, but don't put so much pressure on following every milestone to get there because life will take you left and it'll take you right. And you have to be okay with sometimes swerving and getting off track and finding finding your passion in that, finding your purpose there. So I would say first ask yourself, what do you love to do? What can you see yourself doing all day? If it's playing sports, okay, maybe you should go the sports route. If it's, you know, helping people, maybe you need to be a doctor. You know, it's things like that, that if you know what you love, follow that. And in turn, it'll just create a career for yourself. You just made me f feel a lot better because, <laughs> you know, yeah, I, like I said, you're right. You're right. The, the road less traveled, you always hear, uh, you know, society puts so much emphasis on, you, you know, you got to do this. You know, you got, it's got to be A, B, C, D. Yeah. You know, it's okay to go A, J, back to K, you know. Yeah, you can, uh, you can start at Z and go all the way to A. You don't have to. There's no rules or regulations or anything. The rules are, you know, given to us from society that we don't need those rules. And I think that's what kind of led me to my health and fitness journey because I was putting so much pressure on myself just as any girl does, you know, in life. Putting so much pressure to be this perfect person, to show up a certain way, to look a certain way, to be a certain way. And that's not life. That's not what you need to be. You need to be who you are. You need to show up as Chantel. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. Definitely. Um, so, and then, so talking about your health and, and fitness journey, uh, when did you really start to, uh, you know, take an emphasis and, and really go for it and, and really, uh, focus in and, and take action as far as, cause you're very diligent. You're in the gym. Probably what I would say yeah, how long yeah, every day yeah. for a couple hours. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when did you start that? Like when did that, that you make that choice to, to yeah, get so committed? Um, it actually, um, 
little story, but, um, you know, growing up, my dad was a nutritionist. My mom was a nurse. So I always grew up in like the health field. So mm. being around that, it was always, it was always in my heart, in my mind, in my body, in my soul. So I, I had that in me, but I didn't really take it seriously actually until, um, I had a, like a situation happen where it actually put me in the hospital. I was getting out of a seven year relationship and um, the stress took so much on my body that I started having digestive issues. And so from there, I went into the hospital and I became underweight because I was caring so much about the other person in that relationship that I neglected my own nutrition, my own health, just the stress and everything. And it wasn't the thing that I wanted to be skinny. That wasn't like something that my goal of looking in the mirror, it was just stress. It was more so like, I have $20, let me give you the $20 for the day and mm. I won't eat today, it's totally fine. So it became a pattern of that. And so got, went to the hospital and um, one doctor actually changed my life because I was leaving that appointment and he walked me out to the waiting room and he said, hey, Chantal, don't make another appointment. And there was about 15 people in the waiting room. So it was very dramatic, like a movie scene. Mm -hmm. And um, I like looked around and everyone was quiet, just looking at me and looking at him. And I said, what do you mean? Like, why can't I make another follow-up appointment? You know, I'm having problems. And um, he looked me right in the eye and said, you don't need to make another appointment because you're not going to be here in three months. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, I'm going to die? Like, I'm gonna not going to be here in three months? Right. And that's what he was implying. He said, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're not going to be here in three months because you're on a path to die wow. with your habits. And that kind of just hit me because he was very direct. I looked at the nurse and the nurse was like, I can't make another appointment. I looked at the 15 people watching me. No one said anything. So at that point in my heart, I knew something was wrong with me mm -hmm. because if something wasn't wrong, somebody would have stepped up or someone would have addressed the doctor. And then I started just crying because I was like, oh my gosh, this is so dramatic. I turned around and the doctor said, hey, Chantel, if you decide to change your life, call me. Oh, you'll be my first appointment. And he turned around. And so that night I went home, started crying my eyes out. I knew I needed to change. And I found a little protein bag of Arbonne, which is the company I'm with now, mm -hmm. just sitting there because my dad had been a consultant. So he had it. And um, I wasn't comfortable with food at the time. So I was like, you know what? Let me let me start with the shakes. So I said, I'm just going to do a shake because it hit me. I was like, I need to be here for my sister, for my family. Something's telling me that I need to I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a better and bigger person because of this. And I need to share it with the world. Like something just hit me that I knew there was more purpose in this. Mm -hmm. So I started with the shakes and then I started feeling better. I started, my brain was better. I could think clearer. I could walk, you know, there was little things that I was appreciating that I didn't appreciate before. And so that kind of just led me into this business of Arbon, which I, I run now an online health and wellness business, Arbon. Mm -hmm. Um, and so in learning more about my nutritional habits and feeling better, I just felt more like myself. And going through that, I wanted to now help other people. And so I started fueling myself with good nutrition. I started being in the gym, picking up the weights, feeling like I can actually accomplish something, feeling empowered and strong. And so in through that whole journey, it got me to realize I meant for this. Like I want to help other people because – I had this mentality that I was alone and I was the only one thinking this way and that's not the case at all. And so I want to I want to be here to encourage men and women that one they are beautiful just the way they are. They don't need to be anything else. Two, that food is fuel and you need food to fuel yourself for life. If you want to if you want to have kids one day, which I did, I knew I needed to fuel myself. If you want to be a better partner and a better daughter and a better wife and a better, I knew I wanted to be those things. So I had to show up for myself. And so, um, that's kind of what started my health journey. And then I got really excited to be in the gym. It, it was cool to see my body change and I could lift a weight and change my body composition. And I could, I could do different things to make my anatomy different. So it was fun. And so I've just been having fun in this journey. And so in turn, it's just made me a better person and I'm here to just help other people. So being in the gym, it's fun for me now. And so I love it. I crave it. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah, what a story. Very, very uh, inspirational. Uh, and what, what was the time frame on, on this when you when you saw the doctor? Yeah, the, so it was about three years ago to this day now. To today? Yeah, to this day about three years ago. The 30th of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably around that time, actually, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, it was probably exactly around that time, yeah. Because my, my grandma had what? passed away in December, 
And um, she was also the one to tell me that I wasn't happy in life when, you know, on social media, I wear a big smile and I was very happy, just like as I am today, except this time, the smile is genuine. It's a little bit different. I so see. three years ago, I was doing the same thing, smiling and everything. And my grandma on her deathbed, um, her last words to me, her very last words to me, because she stopped talking after that and then passed away. Mm. Her last words were, Chantal, I just want you to be happy. I know you're not happy and I just want you to be happy. Do that for me. Wow. And that was it. That was the last thing I heard, and I was like, okay, I have a mission. I know that if this is going to help me be happy and I can help other people be happy, then that's what I'm going for. Gosh, yeah, that's that's powerful. That's powerful. I mean, that, it, was, it, was, it was a combination of a few things, and it sounds yeah. like, you know, and uh, so you saw your body you know, begin to transform. Like you said, the, the, your body composition and everything uh, was, you know, wow, that, that's powerful. That's um, probably why I'm such a strong entrepreneur because – I always am never going to let anyone stand in my way again. I'm mm. always going to go for the goal. I'm always going to go for what I want. And no man or woman or society or, you know, any negative talk is going to stop me from doing what I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I, I love your Instagram page because it's it's so full of inspiration, positivity. You know, it, it's just a, a nice, up. I mean, it's a beautiful, uplifting vibe, you know, that you, that you really um, give out. And, uh, you know, if you, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen her Instagram page, you have to see it. Uh, you'll, if you want to be motivated, if you want to become inspired and, you know, check out Chantel's Instagram page. And, um, and uh, of course, you know, you being here and your, 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 your energy and, and your, it's, it's very, uh, you know, it's contagious, it's infectious. And that's a great thing. That's a great thing. Um, so fast forward to three years now, yeah. you know, uh, you're in the gym daily it, initially though how many days a week were you in the gym yeah when I first started you know going to a gym you don't know what to do as a woman you know like do I go in that section am I allowed over there like can I pick up that <laughs> weight like I don't know and, yeah. and you don't know sets you don't know reps you know you just know the dumbbells you just know maybe I'll do I used to be a cardio bunny so uh, you know us as women I think we all go through a phase where we're like oh cardio is the answer that's what's going to get me my results mm. and at the end of the day it's actually not like there was uh -huh. a point where I was doing no cardio for like months like yeah. two months and i yeah. was like oh i'm gonna gain so much weight no actually in turn i actually dropped weight saw my body composition take because i was picking up the weights oh. the weights yeah. yeah so i was probably in the gym maybe like three times a week mm -hmm. just doing cardio minimal stuff mm -hmm. um i started working with a trainer who i still have to this day and i do that because even though i'm becoming a trainer i want my brain capacity to be for my clients and someone to cater my program for me so that can just be left space you know i could focus on my clients for sure for sure and are you so you're also a personal trainer i am getting certified so i should be certified by the end of this month so stay tuned Gosh. but um <laughs> i will be training um i actually just got an offer so i will be at a facility that i can't mention just yet mm. but um i will be starting there in about a month and so i'll be training both probably at my home gym and in person yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. You can tell us. Go ahead. No, <laughs> I'll leave that for everyone to follow me. <laughs> I like. There you go. Like, I like to tease my, my guests yeah. and when they can't. They got to remain hush on something. Yeah. And I'll just tease them, you know. But yeah, so um, so you're doing yeah, you're in the fitness thing now and you're Arbon. You're uh, what is your official title with Arbon? Yeah, so I'm a district manager with Arbon. Mm, mm -hmm. okay. So that's the first level. There's about four levels in the company. I'm at the first level now. Of course, I want to grow that. Um, I do have a nine to five, so I'm a tech manager full time, which is kind of funny because I feel like I'm always like a split personality between like the fun content creator, that kind of side, and then like the tech detail oriented <laughs> software girl. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a, a interesting dichotomy yeah, right there right? yeah yeah hard to find a woman that has both or just a person that has both i think mm -hmm. that's what makes my role um in my tech job so different because it's basically account management you have to have personal skills you have to be able to communicate but you also have to be detail oriented and know tech and technology and software and so normally people who know software they don't really have the social skills you know they're behind a computer <laughs> they're an engineer or something they're very like tech focused and then someone who's very you know people oriented sometimes isn't as detailed so to have someone that has both that's what makes the the role so you know hard and minute and detailed yeah <laughs> yeah but you handle it you handle it it seems like you handle it uh effortlessly you know well I, that's interesting yeah definitely you're, i mean you didn't even know i had a nine to five i, I did it <laughs> i did it wow i thought you were just uh, you know you were doing uh your arbon stuff and everything else uh, -huh. uh full time yeah you know? no eventually that would be amazing to mm -hmm. have 
you know, this business grow and maybe sacrifice some here. You know, that's the mm -hmm. end goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. And you've also uh, you have some other cool stuff that you've, you've been through. Uh, you've experienced. You were a guest on House Hunters. Yes, uh, that was fun. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that experience. Yeah, so I was um, about a year ago, a couple, a year and a half ago, I was um, living with my parents, and it just got to the point where I knew I wanted to buy a home, and originally from college, I moved back home so I could save for an actual home instead of getting an apartment where I just rented for a couple years, and, you know, I wasn't saving money. Mm -hmm. So I lived at home, um, and I, me and my parents made the decision, like, I think it's time I move out. Like, I want to start looking before, you know, the market gets crazy, even crazier, because it was crazy back then. Um, yeah. and I was working with, um, my best friend, Kelsey, her boyfriend, Edward was my realtor. Okay. And, um, and I knew he was a realtor and I told him when I buy a house, you're going to be my realtor. And so I, I gave him that phone call. I said, you know, I think it's time we start looking and I'm going to be very aggressive with this. So I want to buy a house like tomorrow, yesterday, actually <laughs> yesterday. I want to buy a house. <laughs> so he's like, all right, Chantal, I, I know where we're going with this. Like, let's get, let's talk what you want, what kind of things you want. And it was really exciting because I had never, you know, like had aspirations for a home it was just like i want a home and so it was cool to sit down with him and say you know i want spanish archways and i want wood floor and i want an open kitchen and maybe marble and you know all these all, <laughs> the these, worries, all these things the that bells I just, and whistles exactly all the bells and whistles on my bucket list and um so we made the decision we started looking and then um once we put an offer on the home and it was accepted um, Edward has a friend in the house hunters business, HGTV. And so he, um, I, I guess got a phone call or something that if we bought a home in the time frame that we could submit ourselves. And so we auditioned my dad and I, and if you've seen the episode or if you're going to watch it, my dad is very entertaining. And so, um, <laughs> right. my dad and I auditioning, it was a straight easy win. You know, we got the audition. They were like, we want the episode, let's go. Whoa. And so I actually couldn't, um, uh, move in until we filmed the episode and so um you know we filmed the episode there we filmed it at a couple other homes and it was just such a fun experience i love the team um it was just really cool to be on the show and it, it's a great crew and cast wow yeah i've seen the episode yeah your dad was def definitely funny and um very cool to watch and did that experience at all like inspire you to to pursue maybe some uh, you know, acting or, or anything like that, you know, it performing actually inspired me more so on the interior design aspect of oh. it. Yeah. Um, the acting part, I feel like if anyone wanted to hire me as an actress, uh, I would say yes, because yeah. I'm comfortable in front of the camera. And, um, you know, when I was younger, they actually asked me for Disney and my mom denied it for the lifestyle. She wanted to, you know, not put me in the industry, which I thank her for now. Looking back, I'm like, man, I wonder what my life would have looked like if I was a oh. Disney star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. But, um, but no, I actually really enjoyed it. I didn't mind it. It was long days. I knew if I was an actress, it would be tiring days, you know, a lot of brain energy. But it actually inspired me more so for home decor, like interior design. And so I actually told Edward, the realtor, you know, if you ever need a freelance interior designer, like, call me. Like, I'll do it because I designed my entire home and people think that I hired someone. Well, so, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, so I'm like, okay, I can take on this job too. Yeah, yeah, gosh, that's that's awesome. So, uh, have you since has he since called you to no, to freelance um, at all or? no not yet but we haven't had any opportunity for it but if there was one i would be the phone call yeah yeah <laughs> wow yeah no that's cool no, um, yeah check that episode out and, and where can you see hd tv right yeah and it's also on my instagram so oh, yeah that's i put it there for people who don't have hd tv or can't watch it so if you need the episode i'll be reposting it this week so watch my instagram <laughs> that's right go check that out yeah that was a uh and so had you for that, I don't know how, how much you could talk about it, but um, I'll just go ahead and ask that. So you, you actually looked at a few homes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, yeah. And so that all that was part of the, they actually filmed the, the process yeah. of you looking for a, for a house or was was that kind of a, a you know, that process staged or? or yeah, yeah. So they, um, they filmed me looking at the homes in the areas I wanted. So I wanted Westlake, mm -hmm. I wanted Thousand That's Oaks. Right. And so, um, they found a few homes for me, Edward and them worked together. And so we, we toured the homes and they were very raw responses. You know, the camera's set up right there. They're, they're right there. And they say, you know, just, if you don't like something, just say it, you know? <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, are you sure? Because I'm very verbal. <laughs> and so you'll see in the episode, there are things that I'm just like, no, I don't want this. No, I don't want this. But it was interesting because, you know, having my dad and I as my dad as my touring partner, mm -hmm. um, 
checking out all these homes, we're looking at very different things. I'm looking at the aesthetics and the beauty and does it have a mar white marble cabinets? Does it have Spanish archways? Does it have what yeah. I want? And he's more so looking at like the plugs, the electric, yeah. you know, all the things, the fatherly things. Like, is it protective? And I'm like, dad, <laughs> I just want a home. Like, it could be anything. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. So it was funny having him as a touring partner. No, he, hey, he's just being, he's being dad, yeah, looking yeah. out for his, his girl. You know, I have, Three daughters myself, yeah, so you know. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I can I can appreciate that. Yeah, I can appreciate so that. Yeah, that's interesting. How you know, and like you said, you you you're comfortable in front of the camera, and um, I was just curious, you know, if that it, it inspired you in any way to, you know, pursue acting or anything like that. Because I mean, you're already doing so much, yeah, and you're capable of so much, you know that. Uh, I think it inspired my creative juices just in general for content. I mm -hmm. think, you know, even just my Instagram, just creating different videos and things to put together. I love collabing with people. So even that, I mean, I'm still in touch with the cast and crew. We're still good friends. Like I make friends and connections easy. So I think um, it just inspired me to just get more active on social media and, and put, be more vulnerable too. like tell my story and share some things that are, I'm passionate about. So if anything, it inspired me in a good way for, you know, my own network, my own audience. Yeah, definitely. Would you describe yourself as extro extroverted or, or introverted? That's a funny question um, because the definition of extro and introvert comes from where you get your energy from. And so I would say I'm an introverted extrovert. Like I think I get my energy from being alone, but I think I'm a very outgoing extroverted person. So I would say I'm introverted extroverted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, I, I love that. I, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in, in that respect – um, you know, when I look at myself and I, I draw, you know, my own opinions about myself, it's, yeah, I, 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 I like to recharge my batteries when, when I'm alone. I like my alone time. I, I appreciate my alone time. I value it. Yeah. It's and, needed sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you got to carve it out for yourself. Definitely. Definitely. But, but I think in general, and then I, people, I always tell people, yeah, I think I'm naturally, I'm introverted, you know? Um, and people tell me, no way. Yeah. yeah. I was always shy growing mm -hmm. up. I was always that little, you know, very, um, you know, lack confidence and, uh, even, you know, in the, my twenties and, and, uh, but you know, with life, you know, life brings experiences yeah. and through, you know, you, you, you battle through the things that you want to, that you see as your weaknesses and which I did. And I took the initiative to, you know, to work on those things, you know? Um, so uh, but yeah, that's it. What, and what college did you go to? I wanted to ask yeah, you. Yeah, I went to, um, Cal Lutheran in Thousand Oaks. Oh yeah. Right over here. Yeah. Right. Nearby. Mm -hmm. And what, what was your major? Marketing. Yeah. Oh. So I started marketing communications. Um, and my first job right out of college was nothing to do with marketing. It was legal. It was compliance. And so it was funny at the time because I was really upset that I wasn't in marketing. And I was like, why did I go to college to be in legal? <laughs> and then um, now it's ironic because every job that you take or internship, you learn something from and you probably will use something later in life. And so I didn't realize that. And so it's funny how I was at this job for about two years complaining about legal and compliance and I'm never going to use this. This is just a paycheck to me. Uh. And then I get this job now and it's like we're looking at contracts and we're looking at legal stuff and it's like, I'm the best at the job because I had that experience. And so I always say to people, like, never regret your experiences. Say thank you because you might use it. And if anything, it's it's giving you an extra leg to walk on. So appreciate anything you go through. Yeah, absolutely, Chantel. I, I, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, like, reflecting on my own life and yeah. as you're, you know, you're talking. And, yeah, you know, I, I went I was in uh, – I went to CSUN, got a degree in communications, and then – I started uh, selling water filters. That uh -huh. was my first job out of out of uh, college. But you, you're absolutely yeah. right because yeah. I, you know, you draw on those experiences later on. Yeah. Everything comes full circle, like you just said, you know. And, and uh, that that was like huge. And, and we're talking about in, you know introverted and extroverted. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one thing that really allowed me to to kind of break out of my shell and overcome some of those fears. Yeah, absolutely. You're gonna have to sell water filters. You have to use your mouth. You know, you gotta you gotta talk to people and be social exactly and i was going door to door you know i mean that was just pounding the pavement isn't it funny how sales back then versus sales now we have online and tech and everything so it's like we can use that and catapult it especially with the pandemic and everything going on it's like door to door is almost like not a thing anymore someone comes to your door it's almost exactly. like what do you want yeah <laughs> like a defense mechanism absolutely <laughs> you're right yeah no 100 no, yeah i had a lady come by uh recently and she, oh gosh what was she uh 
She was selling something, but yeah, the defense like oh, you know everybody perks up like okay. Yeah, like the- are you gonna here to hurt me? Or are you here to like? <laughs> and it's like we just want to sell a product. <laughs> right. Yeah. Totally nice lady, but you're absolutely right. You know, um, you've also, uh, and I, I want to get into your recent uh, cool little venture that you did with Nike. Yeah, that was uh, really cool. Yeah. So tell tell us tell us all about that. How did yeah, you so book that? Yeah. So speaking of full circle. Um, in Arbon, I have a team right under me. And so one of my business partners, she's a celebrity makeup artist. And so she was on set with this man who then was um, letting her know, you know, I need a model. Uh, I work for Nike. Um, do you know of anyone? And she always likes to put me on the map. <laughs> so she nice. uh, she sent my portfolio to him and he looked over it uh, as well as other portfolios from other people he was auditioning. Um, and then I got the phone call that he chose me and he wanted to shoot. So... Um, you know, you, you, you hear Nike and you're like, oh, amazing. And But I didn't really believe it until I showed up. And then when I showed up, I saw that the equipment was branded with Nike. And it was like, okay, <laughs> this is a real deal. Yeah. Like, okay, Chantal, show up, you know, be there. And so it was really cool. It was a cool experience. You know, Nike's been one of my favorite brands for a long time. Um, it's the most well-known brand for exercise, fitness, workout. Everyone knows about it. Everyone has their shoes, their bras, their shorts, their hats. Everyone um, and so it was really cool to model for the, the swoosh, the check mark, the just do it brand. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, no doubt. Well, yeah. that, that must have been, and, and, um, what was that phone call like when you, when he called you and t- said, Hey, you know, you booked the, the job. Yeah. I think I was just, I didn't even care the date, the time or anything. I was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then I think I texted after like, wait, so when, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. like, I don't even know if I'm free, <laughs> yeah. but it was exciting. You know, you're, you're, it's an adrenaline rush. You, you dream of. It's, it's not even something that I dreamed of. It was like, wow, I can't believe this opportunity presented itself. And I think that's something that I've always taken advantage of is when an opportunity presents itself, even if it's not in your element, you know, I'm not a professional model, but I'm going to say yes to this because mm. it's a collab, it's networking and I could help him maybe with one of my businesses and in turn he could help me maybe down the line. So I'm always about networking, collabing. You never know what that person's journey is going to lead them to and where my journey is going to lead them to. Exactly. Exactly. You know, yeah, I think, what you know, in this space that we're in, the, the creator, I, I don't care wh- whether you're podcasting, you're acting, you know, modeling, whatever the case may be, in that world, uh, I think that's what you live for, those moments, you know, those yeah. experiences, you know, booking something like that. I mean, Nike, come on. You yeah, and it was a paid gig. It wasn't just like a, here, just stand there and we'll take some cute shots. It was like, this is a paid partnership. Wow. That's, yeah. yeah, that's, I mean, gosh. Now, do you think... Uh, you know, you'd be able to parlay that into other opportunities uh, yeah, along you know, those lines. I was thinking that as I was heading out the door that day, I was like, I wonder if this is going to lead to anything else. And the opportunity, the door's open. It's never closed. I mean, he could use, you need another model. He could maybe show those pictures to another department of Nike headquarters and they may say, grab her. So opportunity is open and I'm there for, I'm always about grabbing opportunities. I may have two hands, but I will grab anything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You got two feet too. Yeah. Right? I got two feet. I'll use anything. Yeah. Elbows, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And now is that, uh, where are those photos going to be, uh, uh, where are they going to appear are they on a magazine? And uh... Yeah, so those were actually um, photos for the website. So oh, okay. I don't know if they're actually going to go onto the website. I think they were for the website department. Nike has like a bunch of different departments that lead up to like the actual website. Mm-hmm. And so this was one department that was doing mock photos for like a website panel. So I'm sure these photos will be presented to the people who run the website. And then if they do want to put me on the website, I'm sure I'll get another phone call, you know, for another gig. Yeah, that's exciting. It's exciting. You know, I recently got back into acting and uh, I booked my first role. Uh, just, I mean, I just shot it last, what's uh, a week ago, Tuesday. Oh, amazing. Week ago, I yesterday. didn't know that. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's on my, it's on my Instagram and, and, uh, but yeah, it, it's it, like I said, you know, you get those phone calls, you get those yeah. moments where you, you book that role or land that job. And I mean, that's what you live for, right? I mean, yeah. And I know sometimes it can get defeating. You know, you're like, you're running, you're running, you're running. And then sometimes you're like, wait, is anyone even looking? Like, has anyone even seen my journey? And so getting those phone calls is like a little token of appreciation. Like someone saw the efforts are not missed, like keep going. So that's what I always advise people because you may not see the reward right away and that's okay. I mean, that's a great example with Arbon network marketing, network marketing. You don't see the reward right away. You have to put in that work in order to then see the reward. 
And so it's with anything in life, you have to put the work in, you have to put the effort, everything is effort based. And then that's when you'll see the results. So I always say the light is there at the end of the tunnel, but don't focus on it. Be okay with being in the present because then the light will just come. 100%. You know, I, I was watching a, a podcast uh, and the guest was talking about how, you know, everybody's chasing the money, you know, the, the, the end result is yeah. like, no, 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 no. Like you just said, you know, you got to chase the work. You got to mm -hmm. chase the journey. That's that's where the, the, the real good stuff is right that's there. That's where the growth is. That's where the you growth know, people is. People look forward to grow and it's like you're growing now. Be okay with watering yourself now. Like you're the plant. You want a garden? Water yourself. <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah it's uh those are great lessons and big shout out to alana walters and the verloren productions uh for uh, casting me in that that uh, that role it's it's uh called the stationary bike oh. it's uh, it's based on a stephen king short story of uh -huh. the same title uh -huh. so um yeah so that you know it's really see it. yeah, yeah i want to see it Thank you. Yeah, I can't wait to, you know, I'll be promoting that when it comes out and all that. But, uh, but yeah, you know, again, that's the, you, you put in the work, like you said, and, and good things are going to happen. Yeah. It, 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 the consistency, the, the work ethic, the, the determination, all of these, you, you, I mean, it's, it's almost cliche, you know, yeah. it, but, but it's true. It's, <laughs> it's true. true. You got to put in all that stuff and, and you'll see the fruits. You'll see it. You'll see yeah, it. And you have to be okay with the journey, whether you know, some of our journeys have taken us off course and some have just stayed the course. And so you have to be okay with both. 100%, 100% Chantel. And, um, now I, I, on your Instagram page, you said some. you have a thing, um, it said on your bio, mm -hmm. top 25% or something like that. Yes. And then there's like a little cell phone next to it. Talk about that. What is that? What is that? Yeah. So that's actually for our bond business. So okay. the, there's four levels. The first level, you're in the top 25%, which means you're not just a consultant. You now have either a team under you or you've hit a quota. And so every month I have a goal of, you know, hitting that number. But in turn, um, the main goal with our is just to like, really just help people. There's two ways you can help people is share really good products with people or to share the business opportunity. So someone could have their own business if they wanted that could take them to whatever level. Maybe they have a house they want to pay off or a car they want to pay off or they just want more time in their day or schedule and more freedom, more financial freedom. That's what Arbonne can do for them. Arbonne can, can create a life like there are people in Arbonne that make billions of dollars that just travel the world and they work from their phone. And that's literally what wow. network marketing is. And so it would be amazing one day to, to not have a nine to five and just have your phone be in the Bahamas, <laughs> you know, making money. And so some of my business partners are living that life right now. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Are they hiring? No. I mean, we're all hiring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's network marketing. You want to join my team? Join my team. Yeah. yeah right. How yeah. many, uh, how many, uh, how many team members do you have now? Right now I have about five. Um, I'm always growing, always, you know, people can leave the business at any time. So I'm not like they're not held under me either they can grow as much as they want so uh, uh, everyone has their own individual business which is nice uh, it's not like maybe other network marketing structures where that person is only held to me and as far as i grow they can grow but with arbon it's great because anyone can anyone can flourish all the way to the top but everyone has to come into the bottom so it's just proven that it is effort space mm -hmm. you put in the work You'll grow to the top. You'll get that Mercedes that Arvon offers. You'll get the incentive trips that they give you. Um, you'll you'll get all the perks. And what's been the coolest thing that you've earned um, through your efforts, through your work with with Arvon? Yeah, with Arvon. I mean, just just in general, there's so many little events they put on. I think our global trading conference, the GTC that we have every year, it's just so exciting to be able to be a part of that. And it's a one time event that happens in Vegas every year. And we haven't been able to do it, obviously, because of the pandemic. But this year, we are going to Vegas in the summer. And so we're going to be united with everyone in Arbon. So it's thousands and hundreds of thousands of people. And it's, it's really exciting to be in the community. And those events are my favorite because you get to be around the community, like-minded individuals, mm. people wanting to grow, all positive vibes, all inspiration. You know, you see people that are able to have kids and they're able to have a family and they're able to be with them 24-7 and not have a 9-to-5. And that is what I inspire to look forward to. And this this is a, an annual trip to, to Vegas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Annually to Arbonne, yeah. Oh, awesome. Is your dad still in it? No, he's not. No, oh. he's not. But he's my best client. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he's my best client. He's retired now, so he's just at home. He actually just had knee surgery, so he's oh. just relaxing at home and just you know taking his time retirement. But he is my best client, and he's on all my Arbon stuff. Awesome. Shout out to dad. What's your dad's name? Gary. Gary. <laughs> Shout out to Gary and get better with that knee, Gary. 
yeah. yes. Uh, yeah, well, so so how long was your dad involved with, with Arbon? Um, I don't know, actually, yeah. like probably a couple years because yeah. Arbon's been around for 40 plus years. I was about to ask you. Yeah, uh -huh. so 40 plus years. So he's probably in it for a couple of years and then he went into nutrition from there. So he's been a nutritionist his whole life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. And, and so, I mean, you're doing so much, Chantal, with your life, and it's amazing to see. It's inspirational. It's motivational. Um, for you, for everything that you're doing, you know, what is the, the I don't know if you can narrow it down to one thing, you know, mm -hmm. the most, what is the most gratifying thing or maybe a couple of things, you know, about everything that you're doing? What brings you the most joy, the most gratification? I think in all my job roles, um, I have such like a giving and helpful nature. I think just seeing people smile and and helping people like helping people is what i'd like to do and because all my businesses have something where i can help someone that to me is fulfilling and rewarding because in my tech job i'm helping doctors and nurses and ob joans and dentists oh. every single day making them smile helping grow their strategy with Arbon, I'm helping people you know feel their best look their best maybe they they haven't been able to get into the gym in a while with training, I'm able to like shape them and make them happier about themselves, get them to look in the mirror and smile. And so just with all my ventures, even with modeling, you know, I'm not this stick figure and I don't aspire to be. So I like to be a model that's healthy. And so I want to show girls, you can still model and be healthy. You can still be beautiful and eat a burger. Like it's okay. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. so in all my job ventures, I think just the most gratifying thing is being able to help people and then make a living from it. <laughs> Yeah, that's honestly. That's, absolutely. Yeah. No, no, that's a beautiful thing. You know, I think, uh, you know, you always hear about in sales, especially, you know, yeah. the more people you can help, you know, the more the more money you're going to make, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I think when you come from a good place, though, you're you're on, you're sincerely, genuinely trying to help people yeah. you're trying to help the next person. And, um, you know, you're putting that vibe that that frequency into the universe, you know? Yeah, and I always say, like, for me, like, I never, it's not about the money. I don't chase the money. I chase helping people. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I, like, turn around. I'm like, oh, yeah, I live in this beautiful home because I help so many people, not because I was selfish and I was greedy or with money or anything. It was just, wow, I help that, this many people that I'm standing in my own home now. Like, that, to me, that's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Well deserved. Well deserved. Yeah. Congratulations on on your home. Thank you. And uh, here in Simi, right? Beautiful yeah, Simi. Here in Simi. Yeah. Here in beautiful Simi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know. Um, so what? Uh, what's your? What are some upcoming goals for you for yourself, Chantel? Uh, personally, and, and and obviously, obviously professionally, right? But talk a little bit about both. Maybe you know some personal goals and and then some pre professional goals. You know, do, what do you what do you want to do with uh, Arbon? You know, um, with your tech manager uh, position. You know, are you trying to grow in the company? Uh, talk about some of those things. In in and and now your your fitness soon to be fitness job and yeah. in, in that position. You know. Yeah, tell us a little bit about some of your goals. Yeah, I have a lot of aspirations. Like, my mind doesn't stop going. And, like, for me, I'm just – I want to go vertical in every single job. Like, always growth, always growing. Um, for my tech job, I actually just got promoted last week or two weeks ago. And so um, – we're actually starting a new department, and so I'm I'm one of the team members to start the department. So, um, oh. one I feel like one of those goals just got accomplished because I just got promoted to the position I've been striving to since four years ago. So, um, with that venture, um, I'm really excited because I'm I'm able to create in a tech space, and so I'm creating processes and creating things like that, and so. I just see myself continuing to grow with the company because I love what I do. I love being able to help people there, nurses, doctors. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it's a beautiful thing when you can grow with a company that values you. And so I know they value me. And so I aspire to just keep growing there, keep creating things, cross-functional departments, work on projects, things like that. Um, when it comes to training, um, I definitely want to grow that. You know, First, I need to get certified in a month. So once I'm certified – then I can actually take clients. I know I have a lot of people waiting to, uh, like, on a wait list oh, for me. Look at that already. So, yeah, so I, <laughs> I, it's it's motivating to me to see that, you know, they want to train with me. So it's like I need to get my certification. I feel meant for this at this point. Um, and so some things you can see with training is I'll probably be doing my own programs. Um, I built my home gym, so I'll probably take some clients there. Um, and then with this new venture starting that I just got offered, I'll probably, um, I will release it later, maybe, but mm -hmm. I will be, um, being a trainer there doing some group classes, private classes. And so, um, probably being a boot camp instructor would be fun. So I'll probably be 
in that avenue. Um, and then with Arbonne, you know, like with Arbonne, I, I want to just keep going to the sky. There's no limit with Arbonne. And that's the beautiful thing when there's no limit to a company. Um, yeah, I want to go to the top. Mm, yeah. <laughs> there's no question. And so <laughs> the more people that I can help get better nutrition, better skincare, better makeup, better, you know, all around better baby care. Mm -hmm. Um, in turn, that'll then help me to grow my business. And then I can also help other people if they want a business with Arbonne, if, if they want a side hustle, if they want a full-time thing, or if they want to leave their nine to five for this, I want to show them how they can do that too. And so all those things, I definitely just want to keep growing. Um, probably later down the line, I might want to start my own podcast. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I might want to start my own podcast because I feel like I have a lot to say and, um, wow. I just want to continue to inspire through, you know, through a mic. Yeah. No, I, I think you're, you're, you're well on your way, Chantal. Have you ever thought about writing a book? <laughs> you know what? My mom has written a book and oh. I, we have that writer nature in us. Mm. Um, so I, I haven't really like thought about it, but I've, I've thought about inspiring books. Like if I can write an inspirational book, like even one that someone can just pick up in like a daily book. Um, I, I could write like quotes. I have a lot of like oh. mic drop quotes that I like to say. So, um, definitely something on my mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think, uh, cause you, you definitely have a, a very cool, uh, story, you know, there's so many facets, so many layers to it, you know, I'm like an onion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I know uh, we're only kind of scratching the surface on some, on, on a lot of this, this yeah. stuff, but, uh, gosh, I mean, you, I, I, you could probably go into depth and, and really get, you know, bring out some really cool nuggets. And yeah. I feel like that's why I want to start a podcast because every single topic in my life, I feel like I could just get really granular with and really just show people how to overcome things. I think you should. Why not? You yeah, know? why not? That's my mentality. It's like, why not? Let me just carve out some time. Right, right. There's only 24 hours in a day. Yeah. That, you know what? That's another thing is we all have the same 24 hours in a day because people always say, how do you do it? How do you do it? And I look at them and say, we have the same 24 hours in a day. We just use them differently. That's it at the end of the day. Exactly. Do, do you do you uh, do you get some? Do you get enough sleep? I do. I do. Uh, I make sure I get enough sleep uh, because I know that I can't function if I don't have enough sleep. Yeah. But I will say because <laughs> my mind is wandering a lot, I have been having trouble sleeping because at nighttime, you know, it, it's hard to wind down because I have so many ideas and so many things that just come to me. I'm like, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. Oh, I want to help. So I got to call that person. I got to tell them this. I got to. Yeah. It's a very. Uh, very outspoken person, even when it comes to like compliments. Like if I saw someone, I thought they looked great. I'm going to call you and tell you, you looked great because why not? I live by a why not mentality. Why not? I love that. I love that. Chantel. No, it's stiff. I mean, you know, uh, as we, as I get older, you know, I, I start, you know, realizing, yeah, you, you got it. Gosh, man, you know, the clock is ticking, you know, and I don't want to get all kind of, <laughs> um, you know, but no, it, you got to take advantage. Light, we only get one one shot at this, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. That's yeah. why I always say, if you have a passion, like who's stopping you? Like, go after it. Who yeah. cares? Yeah. Like you're the only one putting your limits on yourself, so you're the only one holding yourself back. So when you didn't mm. get to accomplish something, don't look at anyone else. Look in the mirror. Mm. That's yeah, yeah, right. exactly. Like honestly. No, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, I you know, it, it's, even when with this podcast, Chantel, I, I, I uh. You know, I've been doing this for a little over three years now. And, I, you know, I, I realize, hey, you know, I, I, there's some things that I, I, some unfulfilled goals, you know, unsatisfied goals that I, I, I need to go at least give it a shot, you yeah, know. Yeah, and that's great that you're realizing it, honestly, because awareness is the first step. Mm -hmm. you're right. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and I said, you know, what the heck? Why not? Yeah. You know, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And, and. So here we are, you know, the journey has been unbelievable, you know, and I get to, to meet uh, individuals like yourself, amazing individuals, and I get inspired every week, you know, I, I, I bring on a guest every week, and it's just like I get a shot in the arm every yeah. week, it's, it's just amazing. And it, everyone has a different viewpoint, everyone comes with different stories, so you get like a, a fulfilling inspiration from anyone, and anyone who watches your podcast should feel that as well. Absolutely, and, that, and that's, that's the essence of it, that's why I do it, is to to do that, you know, through the guests, inspire others, you know, go out and do what, what, you know, what you've always wanted to do. Go give it a shot. Try at least, you know, like Nike, right? Just do yeah, it. Yeah, literally, just do it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, literally. Exactly. So um, do, do you want to give any shout outs to uh, anybody before we wrap things up? Yeah, I mean, shout out to my mom and dad and sister for always supporting me, especially Nicole, my sister. Um, no matter the lows, the highs, she's always there to pick up any phone call. 
Um, she's very direct and sometimes I need that. And uh, even though in the moment I don't like it <laughs> uh. afterwards, I always look back and go, thank you because you were the only person to look me in the eye and tell me the truth. Mm. And sometimes in life we need that, to be honest, we need, we need them. Um, we need that. And shout out to my Fox. They're my four, five best friends, friends of Kelsey Smith, Kelsey, who's my best friend. Okay. We all came together and met, um, and they're our core group and we all do business together. We all inspire, support each other. So if you don't have a group like that, you need one because yeah. support is everything. Um, you know, like they're my first phone call. We have a group chat. When I start crying, they're the first phone calls. They're either show up at my door or we get on FaceTime and they just start letting me know what, what's going on, you know, inspiring me, impacting me, telling me to get up off my feet and just go out into the world and be Chantel. And I think when you have people like that, that can bring you back to who you're meant to be and who you are, it's really, really valuable. So I always say, you are the definition of the five people you hang around. So reevaluate your circle. If those five people aren't bringing you up, then go find people that will. Absolutely. And like you, you know, like they always say, right? I think you just said that, you know, you, um, your network, your network is your net worth. Yeah, your right? network is your net worth. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's it's so And then true. shout out to Tila and Mama Swole. My trainers are the ones who keep me swole in the gym. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you need that motivation in and out of the gym. And I've seen, yeah, I've seen those videos with, with uh, those, yeah, you guys, you girls do not mess around. Yeah, they're <laughs> the only girls I can work out with because we do not mess around. Right, we right. We push ourselves. And I think, I mean, when you have people that can push you and challenge you, it's amazing because it's one thing to push yourself, but it's another thing to have people that see you for you and believe in you. Absolutely, absolutely, Chantel. Uh, this is, yeah, gosh, I'm ready to conquer the world again. <laughs> you ready it's to just, go out yeah, there? <laughs> yeah, no, sir, yeah, I appreciate you, Chantel. You have an amazing story. I, I want to get you back. You're always welcome here. I want to get you back on in the future yes. and, and uh, you know, check in. And once you're on, uh, you appear on this podcast, you know, you become family. I, I do everything I can to support my, my guests. You're now an alumnus of Profile Pod. <laughs> and, so honored. Uh, yeah, you know, and and again, it's it's just it's all about you know networking, building yeah. community, surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals, you know, who are who are going after th their dreams and, and and making their dreams come true too, you know. And I want to be around pe those people, you know, and yeah. inspirational people. And um, where can the be good people find you? It's, you know social media websites go ahead and plug all your yeah, stuff yeah yeah so i have a website chantellisette.com that is where i'll host my blogs and just everything will be hosted in there too but the main 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 page that i always am on is my instagram so at chantellisette um you can follow me on there and that's where i'll be posting videos um inspirational things i mean you see it every day i'm posting something because i just i want to inspire people and Honestly, me doing that helps me, inspires me. So if I can inspire myself to inspire you, then I will do that daily. <laughs> Absolutely. No, and you do it very well, Chantel. I appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, go follow Chantel. Go uh, just connect with her. She is a, an amazing human being. If you want to be inspired, you want to be motivated, you want to work with Arbonne, you know, contact this young woman right here. She will take care of you. Um is there anything else that we missed that you want to mention before uh, we go? No, I yeah. Think, yeah, I think we got it all. Yeah, we covered. I'll be back on. Yeah. Uh, I'll leave out the rest for next time. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about uh, your, your your. Yeah, the next your, adventure your, that <laughs> I can't talk about now. We'll talk about it then. <laughs> right, and then maybe you have some other Nike and I'll stuff. Probably, yeah, I'll probably have other stuff and maybe mm. more update on the modeling gigs. Yeah, there you never go. know. Exactly. Never know with me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, right, and we're 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 we're, we're neighbors here in yes. Simi Valley, so. That's a that's a plus, ladies and gentlemen. Chantel Phillips, thank you so much for for being here and, and, and taking the time. I really appreciate you. Yes, of course. Bye. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, go follow Chantel, check her out, and uh, you will not be disappointed as you just saw. Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in right here on YouTube and uh, the audio platforms. Thank you so much for for being here. It's always an honor. It's a pleasure being your host here on the Profile Pod. For Chantel Phillips, I'm Double A. We will see you guys next time here on the podcast. And always remember to take it easy. Thanks again, Chantel. <laughs> Appreciate it. Of course.